Pep Guardiola is one of the best managers in history. He is undoubtedly the best manager in football today. And what I've done is emulate his tactics. Let's show you the results we got first, though. So we started at Manchester City. So what I'm going to do whenever we test a tactic, especially if it's based off a manager, we're going to do it at their current or last club. So we're going to do it that way. Now, with Manchester City, uh, we won the Premier League with 95 points, 68 goal difference. We're knocked out in the quarterfinals of the Champions League by Inter Milan. Uh, we won the FA Cup, the UEFA Super Cup and the Carabao Cup and the Community Shield. So out of, what, six trophies that were available, we won five. Yes, the Community Shield and Super Cup aren't um, huge trophies, but they still go in the cabinet. So five out of six trophies isn't terrible. If we look at the general performance, you can see we massively overachieved on goals per game, more than 1.24 more than the rest of the Premier League. Our non-expected penalty goals again were higher and we conceded less than the average were expected for the league, as well as overachieving by a massive 7.5 shots per game. That, that's pretty impressive when you consider the attacking side of it. And defensively, it is really impressive. You can see we overachieved on absolutely every single one. The lowest being our tackle 1% percentage ratio, which was 79%, which was just 2.45 fewer uh, percents fewer. So, you know, overall, a really solid performance. But like I said at the start, absolutely anybody could do this with Manchester City. Now, if we do look at the teams, Erling Haaland bagged 54 goals in 49 appearances. Kevin De Bruyne got 20. Uh, he also got 19 assists. And Bernardo Silva, 14. And Phil Foden, 13. Off the bench, Alvarez scored 14 goals. While Jack Grealish got double figures. He got 10 goals and 13 assists. A really impressive season for him. But the other one is Mateus Nunes got 10 goals and 11 assists throughout the season, which is, well is pretty impressive for him so these are the this is the team that everybody expects to dominate with when whenever you test the tactic but what happens when we try it with a lesser team well let's show you how we got them now the second team i tested this tactic with was Notts county um they predicted to finish fifth so in the playoffs um but the league two it, it's really tight, the League Two team. Anyway, we finished eighth. We're one point outside the playoffs. Uh, we actually missed out on the final day, but we did have a plus 17 goal difference. The problem is some of those defeats needed to be turned into draws where we lost 16 games. In terms of our general performance, the goals per game was better than the average for the league, as well as our shots per game. We did struggle on the defensive side with this tactic as we conceded, um, we, we conceded more than the average, unfortunately. But... You know, that is, again, is going to happen when you play at this level. And if we dive into the team, we can see Macaulay Langstaff led the way with 22 goals. Kedwin Scott getting 16, while Jody Jones and David McGoldrick getting 12 each. In terms of where our assists came from, Dan Crowley got 11, McGoldrick 9, and Aaron Namand got 8 as well. So they were pretty shared around in terms of goals and assists. But this isn't the only team we tested this tactic with. That's right, I also went north of the border into Scotland and tested it with Aberdeen. Now, Aberdeen were predicted to finish fourth. Bear in mind, in Scotland, you have the big two who you could bet your life savings on that every single season they will finish first and second. Normally, with Celtic in first. Let's look how we got on in the cup competitions first. Um... Europa League, we didn't do all that well. However, we got to the final of the Scottish Cup where we lost to Celtic in the final. We won the Scottish League Cup um, and we were knocked out in the 16, round of 16 by Antrik Frankfurt in the Europa Conference League. However, if we go into the uh, league table, we finished second. We were 14 points behind the winners' Rangers, uh, but we did finish above Celtic and got Champions League football, so we overachieved there. Only losing six games all season and only conceding 30 goals while scoring 80. Really, really impressive season. And if we look at the polygon for the general performance of the team, you can see that our goals per game were better than the league average. Our tackles won was better. The only thing that was slightly less than the league average was our shots on target ratio. Everything else we massively overachieved compared to the rest of the teams in the Scottish Premiership. And when we look at our outputs, where well, we can see Connor Barron scored 25 goals, uh, Bojan Bivoski scored 17, and Vincent Bejan scored 16. So the goals were shared around with those two leading the way, and our assists were again pretty shared. Vicente Bejun got 14, Connor Barron himself got 11, while Dante Polva um, Polvara sorry, got 9. So again, they were really spread out. So... 
The tactic in itself has produced pretty good results. A second place finish with Aberdeen, who broke the monopoly of the big two in Scotland. Notts County narrowly missing out on the playoffs. And Manchester City, well, they are just the ever-rolling train that dominates English football. So, let's show you how it works. Now, the tactic itself is a 4-3-3, and we play it with a halfback. So, we want that player to act as both a deep-line playmaker and, a, and an anchor. He's going to be doing both jobs. Well, let's start with the team instructions. We have a positive mentality. Now, you can set this to attacking if you want. However, I find for it to work best with all teams, positive or even balanced works the best. A team like Manchester City absolutely have it set to positive or attacking. But when you go down the leagues and you're using teams like Notts County, even Aberdeen to some extent, you want to be bringing that back and pulling it in and making sure that you are controlled both in attack and defence. Balance will mean players stick to their roles and instructions much more accurately than if you give them more free reign by going into the uh, attacking or very attacking stages of it. In possession, we are uh, playing fairly wide, so we are looking to utilise the inverted winger and inverted forwards we have. Um, while also spreading the pitch, we want to make as much room as we can. We're going to be playing out of defence with a short, high tempo style of play, and we're also looking to work it into the box. Now, lots of people, when they recreate Pep Guardiola's tactics, tend to have passing to space on. For me, it doesn't work, and the reason for that is that I find on this game, if you pass it into space, you just end up giving the ball away constantly with stupid long balls that are, in, while they're into space, they're into about 40 yards of space and it doesn't make any sense. So I always take this out, but what I do have is be more expressive, which allows the players individual flair and abilities to come to the fore while allowing them to run at the defense as well. In transition is key. Now, this is where we really want to be making sure that we are pressing them high up the field. We have a high defensive line, so we're going to be pressing them as soon as they get the ball back. And as soon as we win it, we're going to look to counter attack and get into the box and create chances as soon as we can. When the goalie's got it, I, ha we, I haven't set it to distribute quickly or slow the pace down. Again, the goalkeeper, when you're playing at the level of Manchester City or even at Notts County, should have the intelligence to be able to have a look at how the play is at that point in time. Remember, we are going to play out from the back anyway, so the chances are he's going to hold it and roll it out to the centre-backs or throw it to the full-backs. And out of possession, like I said, we have a high line of engagement and a high defensive line. So for this tactic, you do need quick defenders who have a high level of anticipation. Both of those are going to be key. If you don't have high levels of anticipation, the through balls will cut you open and you will end up giving away multiple one-on-one -on -one opportunities, which I guarantee at any level the AI will put away while you will see your strikers miss them nine times out of ten. The high press level of engagement, really important to have a striker with a high work rate and high stamina because you are going to be relying on them to close the goalkeeper and the defenders down as soon as they get the ball. We're going to prevent the short goalkeeper distribution, which key is key with the high defensive, um, sorry, high press, um, and we're going to be stepping up more. So again, we're looking to be playing offside. That is what we want to do. We're going to try and, again, kill off those three balls. But please remember, if you don't have high anticipation or high pace at the back, just drop it back to a, a higher defensive line or even to a standard. It does leave more space here. Um... But realistically, you're not going to give as well. You may go. You could even pull the striker back to a mid block if you wanted to. They're still going to press and they're still going to push up, but it allows you not to give away multiple one on one opportunities, which I think is going to kill you um, if you don't have that. So please bear that in mind. Now, in terms of player instructions, um, I like to have, I mean, the goalkeeper, sweeper, keeper, so it always has dribble more. You, we're gonna, you need a keeper who's good with his feet. You can adjust that to a normal keeper if you wanted to, but obviously for this tactic and the way Man City and Pep Guardiola set up, it is a sweeper, keeper. We have an inverted fullback who's going to hold his position and sit narrower. Um, so we really need, you, you are going to need somebody who's going to be comfortable bringing the ball into this area of the pitch and looking to play that pass, but they are set to a defensive role. So what will happen is, as your left back, the inverted wing back goes on, you will drop into a back three. That, again, is key. You don't have to have a librero here if you don't want to. You could have a ball-playing defender. Now, the reason I have him set to stay wider is because as he goes into your centre of the park, into that more holding role, he's going to drift out, drift out here. 
So again, really key that we have him filling in for your right back. In terms of your centre-back, um, just a normal central defender, take more risks and stay wider. So again, your left wing-back is going to bomb on. He's going to drop into there. Um, realistically, we want them to be dribbling less. With Nathan Aki, he likes to bring the ball out of defence. But you, you know, you're going to be taking risks with the passes, not with the dribbling. Um, and then your inverted wing back, we've put him to take more, more risks. It's as simple as that. We want him getting forward into these areas here, um, supporting your half back and even supporting your central midfielders if possible. In terms of the half back, they are literally just going to sit there. They're going to hold their position. They're going to dribble less. They are a go between between taking the balls off your centre halves and giving it to your more creative players in that four there, which is your advanced playmaker, your centre mid, and then your two wingers. That's all you want your halfback doing. You don't want them doing anything else, really. We have a centre midfielder who's going to take more risks, dribble more, shoot more often. We're also going to let him have a free roaming position. We want him to be bombing around the field. He is your creative outlet to really get the most out of this team and make it tick. Next to him, you have an advanced playmaker who, again, is going to roam around the pitch, run wide with the ball. There is a reason for that, which I will come on. So we want him coming out here um, as well as getting further forward. And this is why we have an inverted winger set here. Because, again, we're letting the inverted winger roam from position. Now, while we do have him set to stay wider, he is running to set off a support. Remember, your inverted wing back is coming inside, so your advanced playmaker is going to drift out. That is why that's situated. That is why that is set up the way it is. Um, we also want your inverted winger to be shooting more often and scoring as many goals as they can. Your inside forward, um, again, we're not keeping them glued to the touchline. We're going to let them roam. Um, but we are asking them to stay wider at the same time. So basically that means any part of the pitch here, which is where we are looking, is absolutely his. I would even go as far as here. Any way around there for me is absolutely fine and then you have a complete forward up front who's going to hold the ball up they're all your standard instructions but we want him to be shooting as much as possible and getting into the box and getting on the end of the balls coming in from these four players now what this this tactic does guarantee you is goals it does mean that if you don't set your defense you don't make those slight tweaks that i stated before you will concede goals but I guarantee success with this tactic. Um, you've had a domestic treble. You've broken the monopoly in Scotland. You've seen it. So give it a go. The download link is in the description below. Let me know how you get on. Um, a nine next tactic, which I'll bring you tomorrow, is the Chabby Alonso tactic as we have a look at his um, tactics that have made Leverkusen the dominant team in Germany this year. I'll see you then. Remember, I stream on Twitch Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays. So the link is in the description below if you'd like to check out one of those streams where we are doing a journeyman moneyball save. And we're currently with an athletic in Scotland. So I'll see you all soon. Remember, hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up. Let us know in the comments what tactic you'd like to see us do next. And I will see you all there.